السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین سیدنا و حبیبنا و نبینا محمد و علی آلہ و اصحابہ و ازواجہ و من تبعہم بحسان الى یوم الدین قال الله تعالى هل اتاك حديث ضيف ابراهيم المكرمين اذ دخلوا عليه فقالوا سلاما قال سلام قوم منكرون فراغ الى اهله فجاء بعجل سمين فقربه اليهم قال الا تاكلون وعن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الاخر فليكرم ضيفه ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الاخر فليصل رحمه ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الاخر فليقل خيرا او ليصمت متفق عليه This chapter is about honoring the guest Honoring the guest is one of the duties of a Muslim and a requirement of our deen. It's not an optional thing that if you may or if you feel like doing it, then you would do it. Just like we have many fara'id in Islam, For example, we have Salah, we have Zakah, we have Fasting, we have Hajj. Similarly, there are many more things that are obligatory in Islam, there are must to be fulfilled. We are ordered to fulfill them. And one of those things is honoring the guest. Many times, when we, even as Muslims, we think about our deen, we think of some very limited ibadahs, issues of the life that we consider part of our deen. Whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us instructions about each and everything that we go through in our lives and has given us details of how to perform them, how to do these things. Most of these things we find them are neglected, ignored, forgotten about and in many cases even if we know it and few of us know it we have no importance for them. And therefore it is important to look at these type of ahadith and remind ourselves of them. Normally when things are not spoken about, then we forget them and we start neglecting them. That is the reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say just come for salah five times a day. He also assigned adhan in Islam. And after adhan you come to the masjid then there is iqamah also. These are all reminders. So that now we remember it's time for salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind for reminder helps believers. So reminder always helps. But these are certain issues that we don't even talk about. We have totally neglected the issues and not even considered them part of our deen. There are many of these issues as we talk about these chapters 
in the light of a hadith every week we find some hadith that we may have heard about but not they are not in our practice or a hadith that we may not even have heard about at all in our lives and certain issues that we never even thought that they do exist in our deen and things that we don't even think that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever talked about them <coughs> sometimes it makes me think and wonder over a period of 23 years Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught each and everything without neglecting any issue of our lives. We have countries that have been running for years, for hundreds of years. And still they don't have, they have boards that are sitting and discussing issues and they have board of legislators and uh, congressmen and all of these people who are always discussing the issues and day-to-day -day affairs and yet they are not able to address all of these and not only not even talking about going to the details they are not even able to address just the issues just the issues that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam talked about although he talked in all the details of those issues they are not even able to cover these issues or the headings of these issues it amazes over a period of 23 years a person who was there 1400 years back would cover all of these topics gives the most perfect and beautiful teachings about them such teachings that even 1400 years later with all the changes in the world in the living standards in the human beings themselves in the lifestyles in the calamities and everything that, are, that is befalling the human beings in the world we don't find any need of changing these teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they are still as applicable to our lives as they were at the time they were mentioned 1400 years back no explanation to this except to say that he was a prophet of Allah and these are all miracles of that prophet of Allah So here we have the issue of honoring the guest. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked so strongly about it. He did not say that if you have a guest, try to be nice with him. This is how we might put it to each other. Try to be nice to him. Try to help him. Try to honor him try to respect him no he did not use any of these words look at the wording of the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam used the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu who says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al akhir fal yukrim dayfah Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should honor his guest. Look at the wording. Whoever believes in Allah, whoever believes in Allah and the, the last day, believes that one day he will be resurrected and will be judged for his deeds. If you know the Arabic, if you look at the, Arabic, the wording of the Hadith, Lam means you must. That person must honor his guest. In simple words, he's telling us that those who do not believe in Allah and the last day are the only people who will disrespect their guests, who would not honor their guests. If you have Iman, if you have the fear of Allah, 
If you have Iman in the day of resurrection, Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would for sure honor your guests. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَصِلْ رَحِمَةً Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should join the relationship with his relatives. وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتَ And whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should say a good word or just remain quiet. Just be silent. Not say anything. That's not our topic. Going back to the part of the hadith for which Imam, Bu Imam Nawawi rahimahullah have mentioned this hadith in this chapter and that is Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yukrim dayfa. Whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment should honor his guest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned that example in Quran al-Kareem. In Surah al-Dhariyat, where he mentioned about angels visiting Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam in the form of a human being. So he did not recognize that these are angels. He didn't know it. They went to him as guests. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ ضَيْفِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ Did you hear the story of the honorable guests of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam? إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَقَالُوا سَلَامًا When they entered into his home and they said salam to him, قَالَ سَلَامًا He replied to their salam, قَوْمٌ مُنْكَرُونَ you are new people to me. I cannot recognize you people. Unknown people. Qawmun munkarun. People that are totally unknown to me. Who are you people? But they did not explain anything. They just said with him, they changed the topic. Faragha ila ahli. Faja'a bi'idlin sameen. Right away, he made them sit there, went to his family, asked them to prepare the meal, and he brought a lamb. He brought a lamb to them to eat. He brought the meat to them to eat. Allah is telling us in these ayahs how they were honoring their guests. Honoring some unknown people who he had never met before. Doesn't even know what the, why they are at his home for. He doesn't even know what they would like to get from him. All he knows is some people are visiting him, so he's offering the food to them. With our situation nowadays, as everything changed, even this thing has totally changed. And not only changed, there are certain things that when we think about them, we say, it's bad, and people don't even recognize it's bad. But now we are going a step beyond that. It's bad, and not only that people don't even realize it's bad, people consider it good. I mean, totally the other way around. And unfortunately, it's not few things anymore. If you look around you, in the world, everything that you hear, it looks like people are just coming from a different world and looking at it from total different angles. They are wearing different glasses than we do. They have different eyes than we do. What, what are they getting? Where are they getting all of this from? But of course, it's nothing surprising. It's something that was predicted by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than 1400 years back. And he informed us that a time will come when everything will be just upside down. People's mentality, their way of thinking, 
their way of understanding, everything will be just upside down. Everything will be 100% wrong. The most truthful person will be considered the worst liar. The worst liar will be honored as the most truthful person in the world. We see it all around. And in every way, in every method, in every way of life, those people who never even wash themselves after using the bathroom and after using the toilet are considered the cleanest people. And those who wash themselves, they are the dirty people. Because you have water, you know, why, why do you keep water in the toilet? It makes a lot of mess over there. So you are dirty. Don't wash yourself, then you are a clean person. I mean, everything has changed. No right understanding. We say modesty. People who walk undressed are the most modest person in the world. And you cover yourself up properly, you say there is no modesty. You don't respect other people. Look how you dress. You should be more respectful when parents are leaving home with their children and children are wearing the proper dresses, Islamic dress. He says, you know, I, in our Darulum, teachers told us we should have Islamic dress. He said, but you should look a little better, you know. Go and go tell your mom to give you a different dress. So that he would look better. I don't want to go into details of things that we ourselves are doing how many people complain that our wives don't like the beard on our face? Because it doesn't look nice. So how do you look nice? In other words, she wants you to look better than Yusuf السلام, and better than Rasulullah وسلم, in other words. And if you take it off, then it will look better. And those Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam, the most perfect human beings did not look that good. The understanding is totally other way around. When Allah covers up the brain, then people cannot figure out what's right. They cannot differentiate between the right and wrong. And the understanding totally changes. The way we look at things totally changes. Then every good looks an evil. And every evil becomes the most perfect thing in the world. A person who talks and during his talk keeps on cursing ten times. You see, he really knows how to talk. And a person who's trying to be humble and at least watches his words. We say, you know, he cannot communicate with people. He doesn't know how, how to communicate. Because if you talk to people, you should curse like they do. Then you are, you know how to talk. A young boy who's standing very respectfully, they will take him to the hospital. Something is wrong. They'll complain to the parents. That something is wrong with your son. He's too shy. He doesn't dance with us. The person who's dancing like monkeys and jumping within the front of the in the public, say, yeah, you know, he fits that place. He's very, I mean, he's very active, very nice, very understanding. Great, you did great. Well, admire him. You'll have your pictures in the papers. That he did a great thing. He was the best. I mean, he copied the monkeys the best. So this is why he's one of the best human beings. We get the monkeys and put them up in the cages. And then we start jumping like them. And we say, now we became the most perfect human beings. So the 
This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers up the grain. Of course, then people go to the extent of carving the stones and then saying, Oh, you are my Lord. You did everything for me. You provide me with the food. You just, you just made it, you know. You put it in front of you. You know that you just got a rock from the mountain. You just got a piece of wood from the tree. And you put it into some shape. And now, oh, you are my Lord. Lord, please save me. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the understanding away, covers up the brain. You know the people who would come on public and will say, yes, I admit that I drink my own urine. And there are so many benefits in it. And now they are bringing the urine of those cows packed in those packages just like the water of Zamzam and they are drinking it. Proud of it. Very proud of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He covers up the mind, the understanding just goes away. We should always pray for the hidayah and for the right understanding. So, one of these things that have really changed and we have lost the understanding of it is this topic that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have discussed it in the hadith. Respecting the guest and honoring the guest. There will be more ahadith coming about this chapter later on as we talk about different type of uh, different manners of eating and feeding people. But here we have few ahadith, and I will just stick to those and try to understand the importance of the topic itself. We find that nowadays when someone visits us. Number one, we don't like visitors, so that we keep our homes clean. We don't like to wash too many dishes. Subhanallah, we feel that dishwashers will solve the problem. And most of us have dishwashers at our home, yet everyone complains in the home that don't bring too many visitors. We can't afford to have so many visitors. We are tired of washing dishes. A person came to me in the masjid once. Husband and wife both are doctors. Totally disturbed. Almost crying. That wife doesn't wash, wants to, want, want to wash the dishes anymore. We had alternate days for washing the dishes and she told she tells me I can't even wash it every alternate day because I get too tired at work so I will I want you to wash every day so why don't you put it in the dishwasher you know it's wastage it costs a lot subhanallah you think and think over and over that we thought these things and that money will bring us everything. And that is the thing that took everything from us. So when guests come to our home, we have so many complaints about it. And nowadays, one of the conditions we will put, no children please. So only men and uh, husband and wife. Don't bring your children. They are burdened. Because then they will be running all over the home, spilling food everywhere. We don't have enough. We can't afford to clean all of that. So find a babysitter. Leave your children with the babysitter. And they can just come by yourselves. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by a person who said, Ya Rasulullah, I would like you to come to my home for lunch or dinner. He said, I would like to bring Aisha also with me. 
Ya Rasulullah, I would like you to just, just come by yourself. He said, no, then I'm not coming. Next day he comes, Ya Rasulullah, please come to my home for a lunch. He said, Wa Aisha, I'll bring Aisha with me. He says, no, Ya Rasulullah, I would like you to come by yourself. He says, no, I don't want to come then. And that person insisted every day he would come back and that was the condition. That if you don't want me to bring her, I'm not coming. For whatever reason, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that, at least gives us the understanding of saying that if a person will say, no children please, we have all the right to say, I'm sorry. If you allow my children to come, then I would come, otherwise I won't. He shouldn't feel bad about it, and you shouldn't feel bad about putting that condition. And if he doesn't approve of it, don't feel bad of him not allowing them, but at least reject it, or you have the right to reject it. As simple as that. Very simple. Now we feel if we won't go, then he would feel bad about it, and then he will be upset, and then next time we, he won't come to our home if we invite him. No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made it very clear. Wa Aisha, if you want me, I'll bring my wife. If you don't want my, want my wife to come with me, I'm not coming. Of course, he did not apply that condition all the times, but by applying it in that incident, and at that time, gives us that ruling that we are allowed to put this condition with it for us, for accepting the invitation. And I won't come by myself. It won't be just me and my wife. And then we invite people and have them line up for picking up the food. In many occasions, just reminds the pictures that sometime we have seen in the papers <coughs> when they had famine in Somalia and they would bring truck full of food and all the people are lined up with their bowls in their hands that here give me a little food you look at our gatherings and when we invite people you get the same exact same picture is repeated you don't know if it came from, it came from that country or it is developed over here but it's the exact same thing at the same copy of the same picture that was there, that the food is there, people are holding the place and standing in lines, waiting for their turn to get the food. Subhanallah, is this is a respect? That you ask them to stand in line to get the food? The respect is you ask them to sit down, and then you bring it to them. You offer them, here brother, here, eat this. Instead of that, we'll put it there in the, uh, after you see the plate is getting, uh, his about, the food is about to finish, you'll go and approach him, yeah, go and take some more. And you feel that you're honoring the man. That go and take some more. So we totally lost the sense of honoring our guests, respecting our guests. And then people eat and just leave. Many times people will, because they got it while standing up, so they'll keep on walking around and eating it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is advising us, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. If you believe in Allah and the day of judgment, you must honor and respect your guests. Give them every respect you can. Honor them in the best way you can. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go up to his door to receive them. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would walk with them up to the door as they are leaving. He would be sitting with them and talking to them. He would be sitting and paying full attention to his guests. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in say that it was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's habit. If anyone is sitting and talking to him, he would be paying full attention to that person. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never get up and leave or ask the person to leave until those people would leave themselves. They would be the first to leave all the time. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَهِ جَائِزَةَ 
قالوا وما جائزته يا رسول الله قال يومه يوم وليله والضيافة ثلاثة أيام فما كان وراء ذلك فهو صدقة Whoever believes in Allah in the day of judgment should respect and honor his guests and then should make a special gift for him They asked ya Rasulullah what do you mean by the gift Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said for one day and night which means 24 hour prepare a special meal for them that's the gift so the first day they are with us, we should try to prepare a special meal for them. Then two more days, feed them the regular food that you eat at your home. And after the third day, the guest himself should not burden the host by staying there for any longer, except if he knows that he's welcomed over there and that he won't be a burden on them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, after three days, if he would stay there, then these people have all the right to tell him that, you know, this is all we could afford for you. I mean, they have the right to do that. So, the person will be considered guest for three days. And therefore, in other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يحل لمسلم أن يقيم عند أخيه حتى يؤثمه is not allowed for a Muslim to live with his brother for so long that his brother will get a sin, which means by dis disrespecting him. He will be forced to tell him, brother, would you please find another place for yourself? So it's not allowed for a person to burden others in this way. In other hadith, which is in Muslim Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een asked, Wa kayfa yu'thimahu? How he's going to make him get a sin, Ya Rasulullah? Put him in, in a bad situation that he would get a sin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yuqima indahu, wala shay'a lahu, yuqarribuhu ilayhi. He would stay with him for so long that that person doesn't have anything special to offer him anymore. So his teaching the other from both sides. If we are visiting people, we should not become burden on those people. And for those who come to our place, we should always try to do the best we can for them. And especially for one day, there should be a special gift. And a special gift means prepare a special meal for them. A person went to visit some of his relatives. And he spent there seven days. And he was very happy that I saved the food of seven days. After seven days, he was coming back home. He met some of his friends on his way. And he said, we heard that, they're telling we heard that you had a nice trip. Tell us something about your trip. And they started walking with him. One, another one, third one. And here he has seven of his friends who are following him and they are walking with him. So they went and sat at his home and one of them asked, How many days did you stay there? He said, Not even a single day. What do you mean? You stand, you had a good days, or some, some uh, good days out there. He said, What benefit did I get? I stayed seven days, saved the food of seven days and here you are seven people to eat that food now. So I, I got nothing out of it. The thing that I saved over there, you people are going to finish it. I lost the benefit of it. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the contrary of this, he tells us that guests are barakah. Because they come with their food, they come with their risk. No one comes in this world without his risk. A person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm struggling. Try my best to earn, but not able to get anything. Ya Rasulullah, tell me something that I can do by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me a lot of barakah in my risk. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him to get married. Yes, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm having all of this hard time just by, by myself, by, without having anyone with me. So if I would have one more person with me, then we both would be in that situation. He said, just go ahead and get married. He went and he got married. After some days he came and he said, of course, naturally, he came with the same complaint. Ya Rasulullah, 
I got married now, we both are in the same situation. So he says, go and get married to another one. So he went and he got married to another one. Now he comes back and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really giving us a lot now. How? Because everyone that's coming, coming with their risk. And now they're sharing it. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, إِنَّمَا تُنصَرُونَ وَتُرْزَقُونَ بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ That Allah helps you, Allah helps you, and He provides you with your risk and sustenance through the weak people that you support. A sahabi who used to come and keep on staying with, and stay with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the whole day he would not work. His brother used to take care of him financially. So one day his brother got tired of him and he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, look at my brother. Every day he just comes and sits in the masjid. He doesn't do nothing. Can you tell him, Ya Rasulullah, to go and do some work and earn for himself? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the person, I can do it. I can say that to him. But the risk that you are getting is you are getting it through him. If he would start earning, then you won't get what you are getting. Because you are getting it through him. He said, Ya Rasulullah, then just let him stay here. Let me, I would go and earn. We are not favoring those people. So everyone that comes to our home brings his own risk with him. They are not burden on us. In fact, they are barakah. They are bringing it and then we are sharing it. So we should never feel that that is a burden on us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through these beautiful teachings is creating the atmosphere of love among the Muslims and telling us the very important forgotten fact that otherwise we would never remember it, would never understand it that guests are barakah and we should do our best to honor them, to respect them, to do the best we can for them is not vestige of time, is the most perfect use and the best use of our time and of our wealth. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وأفضل دعوانا الحمد لله